smoke till I'm blowing the steamer This ain't what you want, boy, Lil Dirk single I'm stacking chips, no Pringles, all blues, no singles Name ringing bells, all winter, no jingle Internet shooter, yeah, you roll with your fingers USC dunk, stepping cold, no freezer What's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day Feeling blessed, and like I always say, it's one live, one chance We only got one chance to do this right, let's get it done with that being said, I'm working on a couple of projects. Got to do a lot of research. Got to do a lot of memorization and craft up, you know, a good story, a storyline along with a positive message. Be getting to them pretty soon on some recent, uh, not some recent operations, but some back in the day operations along with that. That's going to coincide with recent operations, should I say. But uh, quite a few people asked me about this particular individual and I have stories with him. So let's get into it. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the notifications, hit the likes, always leave a comment. And if you know this individual on a, on a, on a personal basis, you know, I would like, you know, leave a comment, you know, share your stories with them or when you met him or what he was like, you know, let's, let's, commem let's commemorate those that passed away. I met, uh, I met Maniac in YA, I think my second term. I got transferred from OH Close to Preston and I got placed in Hawthorne. Hawthorne at the time, we were uh, there was a lot of Sureños in that building, and there was a lot of Crips and Bloods from LA. The Black P Stones were like maybe eight or nine deep, like Lil Rev, Lil Bird, uh, Pee Wee, Two Tone. You had a, you had a bunch of you had a bunch of individuals, and you had a uh, Crips from LA from the Rolling Sixties, like L Wack, and you had um. There was this big crip that uh, I wound up losing a fight to. You know, he probably beat the brakes off me. His name was Mike Mike. He was from Project Watch Crit. And he had a little homie there as well. There was, there was Everybody was from down south was in this building. Quite a few of us were from up north. Rainy from Broderick. Diablo from San Leandro. Myself. Maniac. Uh, Flaco from East Las Casitas. Little Benny from East Las Casitas. We were very... Uh, um, Skeeto. Skeeto from Woodland. He was there, big, 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 swollen homie. So anyways, I get to meet Maniac, you know, from we're from Tulare County. But, you know, Maniac, when he approached me, he was like, what's up, homie? You from Portos? And I was like, man, this old black ass homie's talking more Mexican than me. I'm like, bro, nah, I'm from Tulare. I'm from, from STL. And uh, we chopped it up and we got to know one another. I was in Juvenile Hall with a lot of his homies from Portos. Most of the time, the three main cities you'll see in Juvenile Hall is Portos, Vasalia, Tulare. We're always deep in juvenile hall. So I was in juvenile hall boot camp with a lot of homies from Portos, you know, Madman, Busan. I was in boot camp with Busan. So on and so forth. I hadn't I had I hadn't paroled to to Porterville just yet. So getting to know this individual, one thing that me and that individual bonded with was uh we used to, he used to try to teach me how to freestyle. We'd always sit at the table and he had composition books full of raps, but he didn't like rapping ordinary, like ordinary raps, like regular individuals, like Mexicans and blacks will talk about, like the street stuff. He liked to freestyle like Eminem. He was a big Eminem fan. So he'd always try to like twist his words and be good with his words and talk about different subjects. Now, he was teaching me those kind of things. So me and him used to have fun like during the day room and, 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 go, and so on and so forth. And we'd just trip out and just rap. And then he started telling me about how it was to be part of a VCP who I, who I should go out there and meet because I told him I was paroling to Porterville. So he was pretty much getting me ready to who to meet, who to introduce myself to, how to find him, so on and so forth. He actually sent me to the streets of Porterville. And I got jumped a couple of times in Porterville because the homies were not accepting me, who I was. I was trying to press homies like, what's up, homie? You saw the STL, bro. What's up? What's good with the homies out here? They weren't having it. So I, I got victimized a few times until I finally met uh, the homie Adam Duran, Lil, um, Lil Menace from VCP. And I was like, hey, look, he was one of the names. He said, if you ever run into a homie named Menace, you know, tell him you know me, he'll bring you around. And I did. So the one memory that I have, uh, Maniac didn't get down in YA like that. You know, he was a bigger dude. You know, he was black and swollen. So, he, you know, he was very intimidating to a lot of people. So he didn't really get in that much fights. But the one time that that individual kind of disappointed me was uh, we were in the day room one time and it cracked off. The homie Rainey was from Broderick. He had a, a pair of shoes and some nice gear. And there was a uh, there was a crip named uh, Bones from a Trey Gangsta Crip. Then you had another crip from Avalon. I can't remember his name. 
And a couple other cribs, for some reason, they targeted Rainy. And when they targeted Rainy, I just remember him, we were all watching TV. Rainy was sitting in the row in front of me. And Bones walks up to Rainy and he goes, huh, Rainy. And Rainy looks up and Rainy's like 5'1 at the time. Bones was like almost six foot already. And I just see Bones slap Rainy in the face. And then they start a squab and Rainy's too small. So Rainy rushes his waist. And the Crips hop up, we hop up, but we're watching Rainy get down because, you know, and why it was pretty much a rule. I think we all messed up. I think we all let him, left him hanging. I'll be, I, I'll be the one to admit that, but we let him go one-on-one -on -one as long as he hit the ground. Those are pretty much YA rules. They get cuffed up. They get escorted out. I start talking to the homie and I was like, nah, bro, I'm not cool with that, bro. Like, nah, we got to do something about this. The homies agreed. We're like, all right, bro. Maniac wasn't trying to get involved because Maniac was real close to getting home, going home. And he was like, look, bro, Rainy shouldn't have got slapped. Rainy shouldn't have got pumped. Rainy has to be a man to defend himself. And I'm looking at Maniac like, bro, you're like the biggest homo we had, bro. You should be knocking down Mike Mike or Bones while we knock down the other guys. He wasn't having it. He was hesitating. So me, Skeeto, Diablo, and Flacco. Call out the blacks. We're like, hey, bro, come chow hall. Come chow time. We're going we're gonna to get down on that four-way area. So we had nothing but... It was nothing but big space opportunity. There'll be only two cops overlooking the whole building. So we arranged it. And as we're walking down the four-way stop on the way back, we're waiting until we hit that four-way lane in, in Preston. If everybody knows where that four-way stop is at, coming from the chow hall, going, back to, going up the hill towards the buildings, the black sucker punched me from the side... He's like, what's up? And he hits me. So now I'm squabbing with this black dude and uh, Alwax squabbing, I think, with Skeeto. And um, the other two homies are squabbing uh, uh, two other Crips. And all I hear is the, all the black P-Stones and the, all the rest of the Crips were like, you know, get them, woo, 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 get them, woo, woo, woo. Like dissing us. And Maniacs is standing right there watching. And I'm actually... I ain't gonna lie, I was getting blended. You know, I wasn't falling, but I was getting blended, and I but he the dude busted my nose, so I was bleeding all over my white shirt. Finally, they start spraying us, and we get down. And I'm a maniac. I can see maniac's face, and it kind of got me mad. The simple fact that I'm sitting there, getting cuffed up, bleeding. My nose is bleeding all over the pavement, and he's just right there. He didn't do nothing, so that kind of made me mad. But when we all left, I guess he got back to the building, felt played, and, and, and rushed one of the, the black peace stones that were talking smack at the time. So we all come back and we all squash the beef. You know, we got, our, we got our money, they got our money. Diablo felt like uh, Rainy got punked, told Rainy to keep the end out of his mouth. A lot of us didn't agree to it. Rainy rushed Diablo, so on and so forth. That was the only incident that I really had with Maniac. I come home, I wind up chopping it up with a lot of homies from VCP after getting jumped a few times and meeting them a few times in 2004. I was living like right behind the, the movie theaters in some brown apartments. So I, the first time I, you know, I meet Menace, I meet Ferns, I meet Pablo, I meet Sal, Flo, uh, Sal Sanchez, should I say. And we wind up jumping somebody at a party, bro. I just wind up jumping in because, you know, I just barely met these individuals. I wanted to be cool with these individuals. I don't even know who they jump. But there was somebody dissing uh, VCP. So I went out there and, and I just jumped in for the hell of it. And they started bringing me around. And I noticed that the more I got in touch with a lot of homies from VCP, they always asked me, hey, you were in YA, right? And I was like, yeah. And they were like, you were in YA with... Uh, I think his name was Adam Ibarra. I can't, I don't know if he went by Puma or Pumba, something along those lines. And I was like, yeah, man, I, you know, he, he, he got down for a little bit, but then a, a Southerner spit on him, on, spit on his face from LA. He, the Southerner came from Nellis and he didn't get off his bunk. So we had to drop him because he wanted to go home. And then they would always ask me about Maniac. And I, I honestly, I didn't even tell the homies on the streets that Maniac kind of left me hanging. I was just like, yeah, he was a good homie. He was a good dude. He's on his way home. He got busted for this. Mind you, in YA, we don't really screen paperwork. You know, we're just kids. We just ask each other what we're, what we're charges with. We didn't even know that he actually told on a bunch of individuals from Antioch. A lot of individuals who were affiliated with Northern Exposure because he was out there rapping at the time. I don't know what the circumstances were. I don't know what the case is. 
All I know is the homies from Antioch later on down the road when I get out of Wyatt and I catch my prison term and I go back, I was functioning with VCP. He winds up coming out from parole. His mom didn't want him living up in like Livermore or Liverdale or something like that. Moved him out to Porterville and he went right back to his hood. Not knowing that the homies from Antioch already had been in touch with the street regiments in Porterville and issued the paperwork out. I remember I was in Sad FC yard uh, 2007 and I called the homie Pablo's mom. You know, Pablo had a brother named Freckles from VCP and he had a, they had an older brother named Ralph. And then uh, there was another there was a there was another brother. I'm not sure who he was. And I was in touch with the mom because Pablo wanted me to be in touch with his mom and his baby mama, Monica. At the time. So I'm all, I was keeping in touch with the streets. You know, they had hella love for me. They used to party with my mom a lot. They brought my cousin, uh, Mike Gutierrez, in, Duck. They brought him into the hood. So I had a real strong bond with VCP at the time. So I call the homie's mom, and he t- she tells me, like, hey, man, do you remember Maniac Cannon? And I'm like, yeah. That's what's up, man. He's like, oh, that's my boy, man. Like, I was so eager to get in touch with him and tell him what's up. Then I heard the news that he did pass away. And that she was describing to me, you know, they, they found him, um, it was a bicycle, a bicycler found it was well, riding his bike, seen him um, dumb somewhere, that they had his hands were swollen, like his knuckles, like as if he put up a fight for his life. And, you know, he was actually hit in the head. Not to talk about the particular details, because I think a lot of us that know him and a lot of us that know the circumstances, we all know who did it. And we all know who's facing charges for it. Both those individuals, when one of them's coming home and the other one's doing another 15 years for a different attempt. But we all know why and what happened and how he was set up. And, you know, it's very unfortunate. You know, I can't say I didn't see the paperwork, but if this is what he was accused of and this is the charges that were brought against him and then the reasons why, you know, they, this man, this, this young man lost his life. He passed away at the age of 21. He did a few years in YA. So I guess you I guess you could say the positive message that I want to send out to the youth is like man he lost he uh, a young man like that had a, had a life of very few potential he didn't even get to tap into that type of potential you know it's the principle he lost his life at a very young age and some of us can be fortunate some of us like myself I'm 35 years old got to live a, a, a great life so far and I have more life to live. And a lot of OGs on, the, on, my, on my YouTube platform and a lot of individuals are still in the game who are actually waking up the next day with a breath and with blessings, knowing that, you know, there's a lot more to look forward to. There's a lot more in life to come. This man can't do that. He passed away at the age of 21. And I wouldn't want a lot, I wouldn't want a lot of these youth that are watching my YouTube channel that continue to do this, this, this life of destruction to have to uh, never wake up again. To have to, uh, to have to go back to their hood thinking that those are your homies that you had nothing coming. And the whole while, they're just premeditating against you. They're plotting against you. I won't say it's backstabbing, but in a sense it is because these are homies that he loved. These are homies he was loyal to. These are homies he who thought was family and were brothers and they did him wrong. For whatever reason, even if it's the, the facts are true and the, the, the basis of the... the, the the predicament that he got put in in which him losing his life is true. You know, he put his trust in a lot of individuals who were quick to, you know, throw, take his life away. And I wouldn't want that done to anybody in the youth out here because at the end of the day, you, your family is going to suffer the most because of your decisions, because of your actions, because who you decided to be loyal to. You'd rather be loyal to a hood and some homies who are under the umbrella of a lot of rules and regulations and street policies when your family is going to probably be there for you the most. That's going to help you out in the long run. Who would rather see you living than rather see you being buried? So bear that in mind, man. This individual lost his life at a very young age. Shout out to the boy Maniac from VCP. Shout out to all the rest of my homies from VCP that you know I love to this day, who I hold dear and hard because of good memories. And I plan on talking about more about VCP later on down the road in, the, in, my, in my YouTube videos. So with that being said, hope you guys like my video. One life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. Peace.